Got him, right there. Oh my goodness, dude. That is a giant. Big, tall crappies. Welcome back to another snowy day in northern Wisconsin. It's kind of early morning, mid morning right now. I'm supposed to get another like six to ten inches today. Unbelievable. There's a lot of places just haven't hardly made any ice this year, especially in Wisconsin. It seems like constant snow, slush everywhere. But uh, that's why we run a snowmobile on the ice. It makes life tremendously more easy. But uh, filming big crappies today, or we hope are going to be big crappies. <laughs> Real windy out right now. I don't know if you guys can tell in the audio or not. So we might start out in the shack with the, the Mega Live. And uh, I've fished this lake before. Um, I've fished it probably three times in the last four years for crappies. And uh, if we can get into them, we should be in for some big fish. But really wanted to do a video kind of going all into um, how you're catching crappies in shallow water. How you find a lot of these big fish roaming very shallow weed areas and that's what we're going to go into today um, if we get lucky and catch a few of these fish i'm not going to say we're going to catch 30 if we can catch eight ten fish in the next couple hours i'll be happy because our size should be right but uh we're going to set the otter up and uh, i don't know if i'm even going to film too much because it's going to be catastrophic for cameras with this i don't know how much you guys could tell just thick wet snow it's almost like a half rain snow going on out here so I'd rather fish at the shack, so stay tuned. Let's get the otter set up. Today's gonna be all about catching big crappies, shallow weeds in the middle of winter. Stay tuned, let's get it going on. Got him right there. Feeling really good. Feeling really good. Oh, dude, it's a monster crappie. Monster crappie, man. Look at that thing, dude. That fish came in, turned around, circled, and then came back. Look at that stud, dude. That is a big fish right there. And exactly what we're after. That is an absolute pie plate right there, man. Cool watching him on the live, you know, coming in from one direction turns around goes back the other way should we put a measure on them it's been a while since i've really caught one that long i would say Fourteen and a half on my very unsolidified crappie measuring device <laughs> but there we go that is an absolute stud man let's let that guy go just fills the hole, dude. Wow, is that a big crappie, man. Let's uh, let's do that again a few more times. Just tall, fat pie plates, dude. You guys watched him kind of swivel around in the live, like right off the bat, he didn't really look at it. But once he kind of engaged on it, it was all over. Got him, right there. Big gill. Oh no, dude, it's gonna be another crappie, I think. Oh yeah, nice crappie, man. Real nice crappie. Not quite as big as that first one, but still a super nice fish. Dude, these are some really, really nice crappies. Tall, perky, fighting hard in shallow water. And you can tell, you know, it's a big snowstorm we got going on today. Fish are normally like cruising at the top of these weeds, but they're definitely like farther down in there. A little bit more stealthy, a little bit slower moving, which is you know something you see a lot when you get obviously big fronts like this. What the heck did I let him down the hole and he came right back up? But uh fish don't like these huge fronts, especially right when you're in them. You know, yesterday maybe could have been good as this was coming in. But uh, today, as this thing's kind of sitting on top of us, just super low pressure, barometer dip way down. And just kind of, it normally makes fish just kind of like slower, creepier moving. They don't like it as much. 
panfish overall like like sun in these weeds a, a fair amount of the time and uh there we go there's a nice fish right there and if we can stick string together a few of those today that is all right with me is it the dnr or did mitch finally show up <laughs> what do you know holy cow Oh, oh, oh. Right there, Mitchell. Where's the camera? Oh, it's already rolling. Oh, it's going to be a good one. Oh, it's not, not as big. Not quite as big as the other ones, but. That's good fish. Look who finally decided to show up. <laughs> wow, well, here we go. If, I don't Normally, someone would say better late than never, but I don't even know if that's true. It's always fun fishing with good buddies. Unfortunately, Mitch is all I got today. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'll leave. It's a nice crappie though. It's a nice crappie though. That's there we good. go. Nice fish. Definitely string them together, you know, in these shallows. Oh yeah, I only brought one chair, didn't yeah, I? Sure. I'll go whole hop. I want to fish outside anyways. But oh man, there's nothing down there right now. But you know, in the shallow waters, a lot of times this is how it goes, where it's you don't see like you're never gonna see like 30 fish on the graph at a time. Where am I tangled here? You're never going to see like 30 fish on the graph at a time like you might in a basin bite, but a lot of times, you know, when one or two comes through, oh, oh here oh, he comes. He's coming. This one's going to be a good one. Yeah, it is. Right there. Got him on, dude. How many oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. Oh, that's a bigger fish. Nice one. Right oh, there. Nice fish. Nice fish, dude. Look at that I've caught three bigger than this one. Really? Yeah. And those are pretty good ones, aren't they? Yeah. Those are really good ones. You don't see too many of those in... Yeah, I mean, they're, they're absolute studs, but and you guys can kind of watch them come through on the live, but I mean, when they're down there, they are biting, but like I was saying, you know, in the shallow water, you don't see, you're never going to look down and see that huge pile of fish like you would some other time. It's a lot more of this, you know, one, two, three kind of come through, and uh, those fish just kind of roam in the weeds. It's just so snowy and windy outside today, I figured I'd start in the shack. And uh, it's super warm out today. I haven't even turned the heater on or had to put any clothes on or anything yet. But uh, obviously when they're coming through, I'm getting them to go. All right, guys, you know, obviously we're jigging a bunch of these shallow weed crappies today. And it is a little bit different than jigging like your standard basin fish. A lot of times when you're fishing in the weeds, you got to remember the whole water column is much more compressed right so because of that a lot of times it's you're fishing stealthier baits you're fishing a lot of baits that are with much smaller movements to get bit and a lot of times when you're fit, talking about that situation you're talking about tungsten jigs and plastics or j smaller jigs and a waxy on there small presentations that don't require a lot of movement a lot of times in this situation you know you might have your favorite kind of flutter spoon that you like for big crappies if they're really jacked up, that might work. But a lot of times in these weed scenarios, these fish are moving around kind of slow and, and you know stealthy, and they're keying in on a lot of the bugs and stuff that, that live in these areas that come off the weeds or whatever it might be. And because of that, a lot of times the tungsten jig, small jig and a waxy, oh man, what do we got going on here? <laughs> a lot of times your smaller jig, I think this is a small gill, are kind of the way to go. And today we're fishing a couple of very simple presentations, basically Acme Pro Grade Tungstens in like a, I want to say we're fishing threes, three mils and four mils or something right around there. You know, kind of those mid size, not the smallest size tungsten jig you can fish, but not the big one you'd be using for like a basin, a big basin crappy bite where you're trying to shoot a jig really fast and heavy down into that school. The other big thing is jig cadence and where you're fishing in the water column. One of the biggest things I could say, we're sitting in 10 feet of water right now and the whole way down, cause I'm fishing very clear water. I'm just letting this jig fall very slowly like this and just bouncing it on the way down. It's a very slow, natural fall that fish from the sides will see the bait coming down and gravitate to that center. They'll kind of see that bait coming down and they'll start swinging in underneath you. Now, a lot of times what you want to be doing is jigging over top of the weeds. These fish might be moving around at the top of the weeds, just over the top, or maybe just somewhere up towards the top of the weeds. Cause those fish are used to kind of running around the top of the weeds and going up and eating stuff right there. 
So walk that jig down real slow. Now my movements with my rod, real small. I'm not doing anything like this like I might for basin crappies where those fish are just kind of running that basin around. And they're like, ooh, flashy, shiny thing. And they run over there real fast. A lot of times these basin or these shallow weed fish, you're talking about much smaller movements like this. Just this real small kind of tickle like this on the rod tip is what you're going for. It's clear water. So we're fishing like two pound suffix ice fluorocarbon which I can go ahead and link down below for you guys. We always get asked questions online. Real light, wispy line, light, very light rod that can absorb these head shakes like these Elliott Odyssey 40 inch rods or the 36 inch rods and these noodle rods. And then fishing those small tungstens and just doing real small movements with the jig like this. Oh, here we go. Got him, right there. Feeling real good, feeling good. Oh yeah, nice crappie, nice crappie right there. All right, the outside hole hopping produced. That is what I'm talking about right there. It is a snowy winter wonderland, man. It's a nice fish, probably the smallest one of the day, but still, honestly, probably a 12 inch fish. Or just under maybe. And one thing you'll notice when you're hole hopping like this, and you can use the Mega Live to kind of dial you in, but a lot of times if you're fishing these big weed flats, as the sun, as it kind of gets a little bit brighter out in the day, you'll notice that those fish will gravitate more towards the thicker stuff. Like even if you can just see here on the, on the graph, I don't know how well that's showing up, but you guys can see all that cluttering down by the bottom. That's, that's my weeds. And you might have some holes where you're not marking any, and those holes where you are marking some good weeds are a lot of time your more productive spots come midday because those fish will kind of group up and roam around kind of those milfoil or cabbage pockets. Wow, right there, dude. That is feeling right. That is feeling like a good one right there. Oh, dude, this is gonna be a stud. This is, oh my goodness, dude. That is a giant. That is a giant crappie right there, man. Look at that thing. Wow, dude, is that worth it? We gotta get another camera out to show you guys this one because that is a stud right there, dude. Wow, dude, I just drilled these holes right around that last hole I was getting them so I could get around some other weeds. That makes the whole day worth it right there. Look at that guys, that is what we're after. Big, tall crappies out here in the snowstorm. Makes the whole day worth it getting a monster like that. That is what we're after right there. Up shallow, in the weeds, phenomenal place to find these big fish. Let's go ahead and let that guy go. Should we pop him in the shack quick to let him go? Yeah, it feels good. Feels good, that is a big crappie right there. Oh, there he goes kicking away. Marking. Big mark. Got him right there. Feeling right. Feeling right. Big head shakes. Get up the hole. Get up the hole. Oh, dude. Just another monster, man. Just another absolute monster, dude. Look at that thing in my hand. That is a beast, dude. Absolute beast of a crappie right there. We'll give you guys a look. All right, guys, look at that fish. We are absolutely on some big ends out here this morning. Big, tall crappies. Not a big crappie guy. Normally don't get excited about crappies, but when they're that big, it is a blast, especially in shallow water where they get to pull hard. Beautiful fish, we'll let those guys go. It's been a fun morning on the ice for sure. It's about as good as it gets for crappie fishing right there, I'm Mitchell. We'll take them. I mean, look at those guys in an eight inch hole. <laughs> there he goes. Obviously in the shack's not the spot to be. No, definitely not. It's definitely hole hopping around per usual as we kind of, as we kind of probably know, but there we go. Fun morning on the ice for sure. All right, now location wanted to give you guys kind of a little bit of breakdown. A lot of times you're, your, you know, your bites that can play out like this, in my experience, 
are a lot of your big clear maybe like relatively infertile style lakes where you have a lot of walleye water right deep clear rocky bottom a lot of sand clear water and then a lot of times you might have one kind of big fertile bay and it might be on the, a lot of times they're on the north end a lot of times it might be where a creek comes in like this one is or something like that where the average depth might be 12 to 5 feet of water and the bottom in there could be kind of sandy it can be a lot of times it's softer bottom in these areas too and a lot of times the fish might spawn in these locations and a lot of times you're looking for weeds that are like cabbage or or coontail or milfoil and thick clusters of it and a lot of times what you'll see is it won't be as much of like a defined edge as it'll be like pocket of weeds here pocket of weeds here pocket of weeds here and you guys have kind of heard me throughout the day talk about how much you know how important it is to kind of make sure you're around those good pockets of weeds and the mega lives a very good tool for for finding that you know set it up set your depth turn it on to like 60 70 80 feet and you're not so much looking for fish as you are just looking for those big tall stacks of weeds and the farther they come up to the surface the better once you find those a lot of times you're just kind of drilling you know three four holes around them real quick and just kind of running through them spot checking and a lot of times those fish in the early morning hours they might roam around the bare spots of that and then it, during as the sun comes up they really gravitate hard to a lot of times those thick pockets of weeds so Really narrowing down on those thick pockets is the difference between catching a bunch and just catching a few. You could easily be in the wrong spot in these big shallow bays and never really be around fish. So that's kind of where we're fishing. That's kind of how we're setting up using that mega live. Uh, that's kind of the work we did before you guys kind of tuned into, you know, we had this one marked out so, you know, from previous years. In the, in the boat, it's a great time to find these spots, but that's kind of the work that goes into getting on a bite like this. Right there, another big fish on. Another really good one on here. Dude, these things are going crazy at the edge of the hole like this. Oh yeah, dude, another stud, man. Another stud. Gosh, are those some nice fish right there. Those are some super nice fish. And as you can see, the hole hopping definitely paying off. And a lot of times it's just moving around to get in one of these weed patches that has a bunch of fish. And obviously this one does right here. Well, Mitchell. Shack, huh? Mitchell finally gets out of the shack but uh, I drilled a big pile of holes and I'm not seeing fishing like all of them it's definitely finding ones that are nestled around some of these real small thick weed patches and when I get around them as long as I got some holes where I can kind of move around that little patch I seem to be catching fish because I drilled out a pretty large area and once I finally got to like right here Definitely started seeing some more fish. Right there. I mean, look at that, dude. This one's going to be smaller, I think. Oh, my goodness, dude. All of a sudden, he's going ballistic right here. All of a sudden, he's going absolutely ballistic. Look at these things, Mitchell. Look at these things. Mitchell's going to... Oh, look at that, dude. Wow, dude. What a fish is that? Good as it gets right there. Let's let him go. That's probably a 13 right there. Oh, oh, oh. Gotta get them down the hole. It's a problem, they're too big and fat to turn around in this hole. All right guys, well that is gonna do it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching this one. Quick little morning, big crappie beat down. Snowy day, blizzardy day outside, but overall, not too shabby out. Besides, as long as we can get the truck out of the parking lot, we'll be in good shape. But I appreciate you guys watching this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed some of the pointers if you're looking to Maybe come out and get on a bite similar to this, and uh, we're gonna collapse the otter down. We're gonna dust off the snowy snowmobile and ride on out of here. But appreciate you guys watching this video. Big crappies, shallow water, a lot of fun through the ice. So stay tuned for more content. No idea what we're gonna be doing next. Might take a couple days of not fishing in order to give myself more time to go fishing in the future, if that makes any sense. We'll definitely be doing some more walleye trips this year. Um, so stay tuned for that kind of content if you guys are already missing it. But appreciate you guys watching this one. Stay tuned for more videos and we'll see you guys next time.